we're going to be solving equations. In particular, we're going to be solving equations with rational solutions. Now, rational solutions means that the answers to the equation can be turned into fractions. And why that's important is we can find them exactly on the x-axis. And they're just more friendly than what we're going to do on Monday, which is we're going to be dealing with solutions that are irrational, and most of those have radicals in them. Okay, square roots, square roots is what we're dealing with there. And then there are, if you remember the complex number system, numbers from even outside our number system. But that's for Monday. And here's the warm up today. Okay. So here we have. Let me make this a little bigger. There, that's a little too big. Reset zoom. Well, all I want to do is make it 180 because I think it'll be less fuzzy. Maybe. Um, I do want to make sure you can see it though, so that's important. Um, here we have a quadratic equation. Now here's a quadratic function. Well, let me wait to do that. Here's our equation. Now what we have to do is the first thing we have to do when we have three terms like this is we have to use the zero principle. Or property. And what the zero principle is, is this. Here's the formula for a quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. And that's where A, B, and C are numbers. OK, they're just numbers. Well, we don't have that form over here. Here T is acting like X. And what we have here is a X squared plus B X equals something that's not zero. So we have to make it zero. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. And what that's going to do for me is give me t squared plus 8t minus 9 equals 0. Now I have this in the form a x squared plus bx plus C. And I can even tell what my A, B, and C are now. There's an invisible one in front of the T squared, which always makes factoring easier. A is 1. B is 8. And C is negative 9. Now, the great thing about this equation right here is that there's a 1 in front of the t squared. a is 1. When a is 1, factoring is easier. Here's why. Here's my equation, t squared plus 8t minus 9 equals zero, and when A equals one, 
all I have to do is stop and factor the constant at the end. That's all I have to do. So I'm going to factor nine. Negative nine. I will turn it into a negative, I promise. But right now, I'm just going to get an idea of what nine equals. Well, it equals one times nine. That's nine. And it equals three times three. Because we're just dealing with integer factors. That's not very scary at all. What is a little more complicated is that this is negative nine, not positive nine. So I put my negative in here and I stop and think about how to get a negative number, you have to multiply a positive and a negative number. So in order to do that, I'm going to put a negative in front of the one and in front of the three. And then I'm kind of going to come over here and consider this. Now, why did I do that? Well, I wrote all of what are called the factor pairs. These, each of these are factor pairs. So this is a factor pair. Well, why don't I write it like this? Factor pair. This is a factor pair. And this is a factor pair. Pair means two. And these are factor pairs just so you can get used to the lingo. Right here. Bleh. Right here, that's a factor pair. And this is a factor pair. And I need the factor pair need factor pair that adds up to or adds to the B number and B is eight. So I look at each of these, negative one plus nine is positive eight. That's what I need, but I could add all of them. One plus negative nine is negative eight. Negative three plus three is zero. Oops, there's a boo-boo. And three plus negative three is zero. So this is the only factor pair that has numbers that add to positive eight. This is what I do. I make two empty pairs of parentheses. Well, two empty sets of parentheses. And then I split apart my T squared here and here. And then I use these numbers up here. I'm going to have a negative one, so I change that to a minus one. And I'm going to have a positive nine, so I change that to a plus nine. And these are the factors, they're called linear binomial factors, a mouthful. That means they're to the one power, that's linear. And binomial means two. There are two terms. So these are the factors that I would multiply to get this. OK, now I'm going to make sure I did this correctly. T minus one. And so I'm going to write check. T minus one times T plus nine. That's going to be t squared plus 9t. So let me make arrows first so you know what I'm doing. 
I am multiplying this T times T plus nine, and then I'm taking the minus one and multiplying by T and plus nine. So that gives me T squared plus nine T minus one T, whoops, minus 1t minus 9. So I have t squared. These are like terms. They're both t to the 1 power, so I can combine them. If I have 9t's and I take away 1t, I'll have 8t's left, plus 8t minus nine. So yes, I factored correctly. I'm just doing a check here to make sure it's always a good idea to check yourself. And now I come back over here and I set each of these linear binomial factors equal to zero. The reason for that is for this times this, to equal zero, one of them has got to be zero because zero times a number is zero. So I'll have T minus one equals zero and T plus nine equals zero. I'll add one to both sides. Negative one plus one is zero. So I'm going to do this one the long way. T plus zero equals zero plus one, which is one. T plus zero is T. T equals one. Okay, that's one of my solutions. That's what solve means. Solve, solve means find the solutions. Solve means find the solutions. One of the solutions Okay, let's make an answer box. One of the solutions is positive one. T equals one. And in my math lab, you'll see T equals, and then an answer box. Okay, now over here, I'm going to solve T plus nine equals zero by subtracting nine from both sides of the equation. Nine minus nine is zero, so we'll have T plus zero equals zero minus nine, which is negative nine. T plus zero is T, so T equals negative nine. That's your other solution, negative Nine. So we have solved a quadratic equation that has three terms. Once you move your nine over, you've got one, two, three terms. So this is a quadratic trinomial. Just kind of giving you the, the verbiage back, the vocabulary. This is a quadratic trinomial. Quadratic because the highest power is two. You'd expect it to be four, but no, it's two. Quadratic trinomial means there are one, two, three terms.
and each of these is linear, meaning highest power one, linear binomials. So linear binomials. Well, I was going to write linear binomial and linear binomial, but these are both linear binomials. These are my checks to make sure that my factoring is correct. And these are my solutions right here. We so have even though even though we said that the factor pair was negative one and nine, the solution is actually the opposite. Yes, because of what happens here. Yeah, got said, it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. More discussion. OK, let's do one just like this. Here we have S squared plus 16 equals 8S. Now S is acting like the S. S is acting like X. I'm going to use the zero principle and subtract 8s from both sides of the equation. OK, now what that's going to give me is s squared minus 8s plus 16 equals zero. Notice how the correct way to write this is to write this in descending order. This is highest power two and then power one and excuse me, and then there is no. No visible variable variable here. But just for your information, and just in case any of you are going to excuse me, be math majors. I'm going to show you something. There really is a variable there. It's S to the zero power. What on earth is S to the zero power? Any number, therefore any variable, raised to the zero power is one. So this is S squared minus eight S plus 16 S to the zero is one, so times one equals zero. So S squared minus eight S plus 16 equals zero. We always write polynomials. These, this is a polynomial. We always write them in descending order. Okay. Um, all right, now I'm going to do what I did before. Notice there is a one in front of the S squared. So A equals one, B equals negative eight. And C equals positive 16. And because there is a one in front of the S squared, because, <clears throat> excuse me, because, I want to write this again because it's so important, because, A equals one, and we're dealing with a quadratic trinomial, three terms. All I have to do is factor the constant at the end.
this, 16. A number with, without a variable you can see. That's a constant. And that's 16. So what we're going to do, and it's positive 16, we're going to factor 16 into all of its factors. 16 equals 1 times 16 and 2 times 8 and 4 times 4. Ah, but it also, none of these are going to add up to negative 8. You can't add positive numbers and make them equal negative 8. Now, 4, time, four plus 4 equals positive 8. So we're close, we're on to something, and it ends up that because 16 is positive, it will also equal negative 1 times negative 16, negative 2 times negative 8, and negative 4 times negative 4. And look at this, negative 4 plus negative 4, equals negative 8, which is our B number. Bingo! We've got it. So, how much room do I have left here? S squared minus 8S plus 16 equals 0 can be written as Take the S squared, write one of the S's here and one of the S's here, and then each of our numbers over here are going to be negative 4, which I write as minus 4, minus 4. Notice they're identical. Now, let me come over here and make sure I'm right. So here's my check. S minus 4 times S minus 4. And I'll do my little arrows. S times S. S times minus 4. Negative 4 times S. Negative 4 times negative 4. So that will give me S squared minus 4S minus 4s plus, now negative 4 times negative 4 is plus 16. So this is s squared minus 8s plus 16, which is what I started with here. So I factored correctly. Okay, now. S minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so I'm left with an S. And 0 plus 4 is 4. And since this is identical, right, I'm going to get S equals 4 over here as well. Now watch this. We have one solution that repeats twice. There's terminology for that. The solution is four. I'm not going to say four and four because four is four. So the solution is four. 
and there's another fact. So you get to learn another new word. Four has multiplicity. Four has multiplicity two. And what that means is four occurs twice. Or four repeats twice, not occurs twice. We're going to be talking a lot about multiplicity. It's coming up in the future. So this is an introduction. Four has multiplicity two because it repeats twice. Anyway, notice we used exactly the same steps. I used the zero principle here. Zero. Principle. and subtracted 8s from both sides, so I would get a zero over here. I wrote this trinomial in descending form, that is the powers on the variables are going downhill. I factored s squared minus 8s, s plus 16 into two linear binomial factors. And then I set each of those factors equal to zero and solved for S. And here I got the same, the same answer. So the solution, here's your answer box in my math lab. Okay. T, uh, S, this time we've got an S. S equals four. You would only write four once. OK. Discussion. No discussion. I'll be putting up these notes. They're our notes in place of the notes that are already there from another class. I, I, I upload those so you can look ahead, but then I, I change it to our notes because we're important. Now here is another, it's gonna be a trinomial, okay? Minus 28, minus 28, we'll have v squared plus 3v minus 28 equals zero. And I leave that to you. Notice that a equals one. So you can solve them like we solved using the same method that we used on the first two problems. You'll just be factoring negative 28 into two numbers, a factor pair that has two numbers that add up to positive three. Let me write all these for you. Okay. Now we're dealing with two terms. These are quadratic, e well, this isn't. This is a cubic equation. Ooh, it's not even quadratic, it's cubic. Help, help. OK, well, first thing I'm going to do is use the zero property. OK, 
Okay, minus 10 W minus 10 W. So I'll have 10 W cubed minus 10 W equals zero. And I guess a really nice teacher would go ahead and write minus 10 W minus 10 W, which is how we got this. Now notice, we have common factors. I'm going to break this apart. Notice there's a 10 and a 10. Okay, so we have 10 W times W times W minus 10 W equals zero. So each of these terms has a 10 and each of these terms has a W. So 10 W is my GCF, my greatest common factor. And once I pull this out, look what happens. I write the GCF in front, and then I write empty parentheses, And in the empty parentheses, I write the leftovers. I have two W's left here. It's W squared. Minus, there is nothing left here. But there is. There's always times one. Now at this point, you can check yourself and make sure that you did that correctly. It's always a good idea. 10W times W squared is 10W cubed. And 10W times minus one is minus 10W. So I did factor this correctly. So what I'm going to do now, this is a factor, this is a factor. So I'm going to do this, 10W equals zero, and W squared minus one equals zero. So over here on the left, I am going to solve this little equation very easily. I divide both sides by 10 and both, and yeah, zero by 10. And that's going to give me W equals zero. If you put this in your calculator, zero divided by 10 is zero. But over here, this is very special. Let's look at this by itself. W squared minus one is W squared minus one squared. 1 times 1 is 1, so 1 squared is 1. What we have here is the difference of two squares. There's a formula for that. a squared minus b squared equals, put your a, well, here, the best way to do this is to split apart your a, a squared, 
into A and A, split apart your B squared into B times B, put a plus here and a minus here. This is called the difference of two squares. Difference of squares. That's good enough. Now, I'm going to do that here. I take the W squared, W and W. I take the one squared, one and one, and I put a plus here and a minus here. And then, just to show you, W plus 1 times W minus 1. If I multiply these together, W times W, W times minus 1, plus 1 times W, plus 1 times minus 1, what I'll get is W squared minus W plus one W, that's plus W, plus one times minus one is minus one. If I subtract W and add it back, or really negative W plus W is W minus W, this is zero. This will give us W squared plus zero minus one, which is W squared minus one, which is what we started with. So how I would factor this is I'd put a square there because one times one is one. And then I would factor this like this. W, W, one, one, plus, minus, and then set each of these equal to zero. W plus one equals zero. W minus one equals zero. And I need to scroll up because it's really hard to write as you go lower. All right, here I'll subtract one from both sides. One minus one is zero. So this will be W equals zero minus one is negative one. And I'll add one to both sides here. Negative one plus one is zero. So I have W equals zero plus one is one. And I have three solutions. And these are W's? Yes, okay. So let's put our answer box up there, but first I have W equals zero. I have W equals negative one. And I have W equals positive one. How does this happen? Here's another rule. Whatever the highest power is of your polynomial, you're guaranteed to have that many solutions. So here, W equals uh, I don't I'm not going to write them in order. Zero, negative one, and positive one. Those are our three solutions to this equation. Does it matter the order that we put the solutions in? No. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I hope all this is looking familiar to some of you. This problem is just like that problem. Let's do it. 
use the zero property principle. Subtract 5R from both sides of the equation. we'll have 35 r squared minus 5 r equals zero. Then you can see right off the bat, there's a GCF, both the terms have an r, but if we break this down, we'll have five times seven times r times r minus Five, five times R, and I better put a one in, equals zero. Both terms have a five and an R. Five and R and five and R, well, R. So 5R is my greatest common factor called a GCF. Yeah. And then we make empty parentheses and equals zero. And what I do here is I write the leftovers. There's a seven, not easy to see, so let me write this over again. Well, there's a seven. Let me just, uh, all right. R, R, and I'll circle one of them and try to be neater. And now we can see the seven better. There's a seven left and an R left in this term, minus the five and the R are out there now. So I'm left with a one. So I'll take five R and set it equal to zero. And I'll take seven R minus one and set it equal to zero. And on the left, divide by five. So I'll have R equals zero. And over here, add one to both sides. Negative one plus one is zero. So on the left, I have seven R equals zero plus one, which is one. And then divide by seven, divide by seven. We have R equals one seventh. So our solutions are R equals zero and one seventh. And really, really, come on. Zero and one seventh. See, so you can get these going really quickly. Discussion. It's 814. I leave that to you. And now. We're going to talk about the square root method. This is another form of factoring, so I'm going to do this problem. Two ways. The first way is to use the zero principle. And just do it the way we've been doing it. Subtract 16 from both sides of the equation.
and that way we'll have s squared minus 16 equals zero. Now another way to write this is s squared minus four squared equals zero, and we have the difference of squares. Right, so boom, 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 boom equals zero. Take the S squared, split it apart. Take the four squared, split it apart. Put a plus and a minus. That's how you factor the difference of squares. And if you multiply them back together, you will get S squared minus 16. Now S plus 4 equals 0. S minus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides, you get S equals negative 4. Add 4 to both sides, you get S equals 4. But there is another way to do this. S squared equals 16. We are going to use something called the square root method. This is interesting. Now, first, I have to remind you that every positive number in the real number system has two square roots. I'm going to pick one that we know, 9. Okay? 9 equals 3 squared. But something we don't often look at is 9 equals negative 3 squared because negative three times negative three is positive nine. So nine has two square roots. Positive three and negative three. Let me pull this over a little bit if I can. Yeah, a little bit of room. Hey, go away. Three and negative three. Well, 16 has two square roots too. A positive square root and a negative square root. So we use that principle when we do this. I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. But, but, I have to recognize that 16 has two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root. This little symbol is used for the following. The square root of s squared is s plus or minus, and the positive square root of 16 is four. So our solutions are s equals negative four, and positive four. And that's the square root method.
So two ways you could work this. And then next time we'll talk about a third way you could have worked it. Isn't it fun? But here we've also got the difference of two squares. S squared minus two squared equals zero. And here we've got, ah, that's a perfect square. So we could write this as the square root of t squared equals the square root of four with a plus or a minus in front of it, so that t equals plus or minus two. So the solution would be t equals boom, 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 negative two and positive two. And up here, we're really doing the same problem. Different letter, same result. S, S, two, two, plus, minus, S plus two equals zero. S minus two equals zero. On the left, I subtract two from both sides. So I get S equals negative two. Add two to both sides. I get S equals positive two. So the same exact solutions, just a different letter and a different method. However, since four is also a well-known square, perfect square, you probably are familiar with that. You could have chosen at the very beginning to add four to both sides. And you would have had S squared equals four. And you would have taken the square root of both sides with a plus or minus in front of the four. So we have S equals plus or minus two, which is S equals negative two and positive two. So you have choices. You have choices. Choices are nice. Monday, you're not going to have any choices. Because the problem won't let you have any choices. But here you have choices. And here we visited the difference of two squares, which can also be turned into the square root method in addition to your education. <laughs> now we go to something everyone hates, but I want to do this first. I want to talk about that because I don't want to miss that. That is not a quadratic. In fact, this is called a quartic. Equation. Highest power four. We cannot use, well, we're about to, but on the surface here, we don't have a method for factoring quartic equations. But, on rare occasion, the stars come together and you get something like this, where this power is two times this power. Four is two times two. When that happens, 
we can temporarily turn this into a quadratic equation and use the methods we know. So I'm going to do that, and this is with a very, very old method going back to the early Middle Ages. U substitution. which originally was called mu substitution. That's a Greek letter, mu. But I don't know who decided to erase the tail, but now it's just u substitution. Here's what we do with u substitution. We let u equal the x squared term. And then we square both sides of the equation. And there's a rule of exponents here that when you have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So this is x to the fourth. So u squared is x to the fourth, and u is x squared, and I can rewrite this now as u squared minus 29u plus 100 equals zero. This is now temporarily a quadratic equation. Cheers. In which, notice this, even better, there is a 1 in front of the quadratic term, so we can use the A equals 1 method, which means all I have to do is look at the constant at the end and factor it into two factor pair, well, into one factor pair that has two numbers that add up to negative 29. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's do that. We're going to come over here. <coughs> 100 equals 1 times 100. 2 times 50. 3 won't go into it evenly. 4 times 25, and 5 times 20, and 10 times 10. And then we go over and since a positive number equals a negative number times a negative number, we're going to take the negatives of all these. Negative 1 times negative 100, negative 2 times negative 50, negative 4 times negative 25, negative 5 times negative 20, and negative 10 times negative 10. Any of these, if you multiply them together, you're going to get 100. So you check out each factor pair until you come to these, and doggone it, negative 4 plus negative 25 equals negative 29. Da-da! That's B. So we've got it. We've got our numbers. Boom, 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 boom equals 0. Put a U and a u, and then my two numbers are going to be negative 4 and negative 25, so minus 4 
minus 25, and then solve for u. u minus 4 equals 0, and u minus 25 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides. You'll get u equals 4, and add 25 to both sides. you'll get u equals 25. Now comes the number one mistake. With this kind of problem. And that is, and I've committed this mistake, you think you're done. It feels like you're done. And you say, okay, my solutions are uh, u equals four or twenty-five, or maybe even t. Oh, x, x, and then you get it back, and it's all wrong, and that's because you've got to remember that the original letter was X, not U. So we have to go one more step. We have to resubstitute what U equals. Here we've got a U, U equals X squared. Here we've got a U, U equals X squared. Notice the U squared isn't used anywhere, except here. So u equals x squared, I'll have x squared equals four. And let's continue this on down. And x squared equals 25. And I think I'll use the square root method because it's so fast. The square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of four. So X equals plus or minus two. And over here, the square root of X squared equals plus or minus the square root of 25. So X equals plus or minus five. And what that means is you have four solutions. You have to, because the highest power is four. So there are gonna be four solutions. So let's get rid of these. And get rid of this. We'll make a blue box, but it's got to be long. So we'll have negative, negative two, comma, positive two, comma, negative five, comma, five. Notice I didn't write them in order. And we put those in the answer box. And those are the four solutions of X to the fourth minus 29 X squared plus 100 equals zero. Ta-da! Okay, we've got 10 minutes. Let's go back to a really nasty one. Do we have to? Yes. Good people do. Now we could go here but I want to go here. A equals five. B equals 34. C equals 45. 
and notice that 34, well, you know, we could divide by five here and there, but not here. We don't have a GCF, a greatest common factor, to pull out. So A does not equal one, it equals five. We have to use two methods together here. We have to use something called the AC method, and we then have to use grouping. So I want to make sure you see these before we quit today. Okay. Now I promise you, you did this in intermediate algebra, but it may have been a lot of years for some of you. So this is kind of a review of factoring right now. Here's what we do. The first thing is I check for a GCF, but there isn't one, okay. Now, I take A, the number A, times the number C. That's going to be five times 45. Put that in the calculator, five times five is 25. Carry the two, five times four is 20 plus two, is 22. So, now, we have 222. We are going to factor 222 into all the factors, into all the factor pairs, and we need to find the one that adds up to 34. But this could take a really long time. So I'm going to show you a shortcut that you can perform with the calculator. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. I'll move this back here where it wants to be. And then this is bigger. Now let's see, our numbers are five times 45, that's 225. This is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to graph, but I am going to go to y equals. And this is what I'm going to type. 225 divided by, I'm going to click on this button right here, which will automatically give me an x. So I have 225 divided by x. I am not going to graph that. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the second button and then the graph key, and this is what I get. Second graph. I get all the factors of 225. I throw out the decimals, okay? And so I have, let me write these down, 225 equals 1 times 225. Now this I have to throw out because there's a decimal. 3 times 75. Throw that out, five times 45, we already knew that. Throw out that, throw out that, throw out that. Nine times 25. Now I have to hit my down arrow key to scroll down. Look at all those decimals. Ah, but I've got 15 and 15. And let's see if there are more. I don't think there will be. Probably just starts to turn around, but let's see.
25 times 9. We already have that, so they're starting to turn around now. That's much better than having to trouble my brain. So you go to y equals. You um, we multiplied four times. No, we multiplied five times 45 and we got 225. So I go here to y equals and in y1. I um, yeah, I should have left that up, shouldn't I? Yeah. In y1. I say 225 divided by X and I get my X from this button right next to the alpha key. It's programmed to give you an X unless you program it to give you something else. Okay, then I don't graph it. If I wanted to graph it, I'd click on graph, but I don't wanna do that. Instead, I click on second graph and that gives me this table of values which when i'm dividing by x gives me the factors of 225 and i throw out all the ones that have decimals so i get 1 times 225 3 times 75 5 times 45 9 times 25 and 15 times 15. Now what I need to do is see the B number. Aha, okay. B is 34. I need the numbers that add up to 34. So 9 plus 25 equals 34. And 9 times 25 equals 225. So this is our correct pair. Now, what do you do with them? We do something different. So let's start over. 5t squared plus 34t plus 45 equals zero. What I do is I write down this term, 5t squares, squared stays the same, and plus 45 stays the same. Now I've got a plus nine and a plus 25, and they add up to 34. 34 is going to break down into plus 25t plus 9t. I, I, it doesn't matter which order you put them in, so I chose this order because 9 goes into 45 evenly and 5 goes into 25 evenly, and it will just make my work easier. And I like easy. I choose easy. Okay. Now, we're done with the AC method. Now we move over to grouping. I put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. I then factor the first two terms to find the greatest common factor. Well, let's see, I've got 5 times t times t plus 5 times 5 times t. Both terms contain a 5t. So I write this in this way. You pull the GCF, that's what 5T is. You pull the GCF out to the front, leave open parentheses and write the leftovers. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. 
Five T is my GCF, my greatest common factor. So I write it in front. Open parentheses. And then I write the leftovers. I have a leftover T plus plus five. All right, five T times T is five T squared. Five T times plus five is plus 25 T. So I did that correctly. Now I move over here. I'm going to be bringing down the plus sign. Notice that I left the plus sign in the middle. Has to be in the middle. Um, we're going to have nine times t plus nine times five. I'm going to pull out the nine because nine occurs in both terms. So I will have nine as my GCF, and then t plus five are the leftovers. I like to put a circle around the GCF because it makes it easier to see the leftovers. T plus five equals zero. Now you look at the whole thing. You've got the left side of the plus sign and the right side of the plus sign. T plus five is in both of those sides. It is now the GCF of the entire expression or equation, if you prefer. So I write T plus five in front. Left, yeah, and then I write the leftovers. Five T plus nine equals zero. And I'm already running over, so I apologize. Everybody who's got to leave for another class, feel free. I'm almost done. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set T plus 5 equal to 0, and I'll get T equals negative 5. I'm going to set 5T plus 9 equal to 0. Subtract 9 from both sides, so I'll have 5T equals 9. Then divide by five, divide by five. So my solutions are solutions T equals answer box. Negative five comma, nine-fifths. Most of the time, my math lab will mark it wrong if you uh, put a, a, a decimal instead of a fraction. But the instructions for how to answer are always either under the answer box or off to the right of the answer box. Wouldn't, Wouldn't that, that be, be negative, negative nine-fifths? Oh, it would be a negative nine. Yes, so it would be negative nine fifths. Thank you. Who are you? I can't see you talking. It's Danny. Danny. All right. You get extra credit, Danny. <laughs> Thanks. E H A N I. Yes. Yeah. All right. Woo. You caught it. Thank you. Or you were rude enough to say something. Okay, this is how you do all this stuff. And I will upload some videos from Intermediate Algebra in which I'm uh, teaching people how to use different methods to factor. And you don't have to do that. It's just review if you want to, it'll be optional. But anyway, we're done and I'm glad to hang around and answer any of your questions. I'm sure there are plenty of questions. 
That was a lot of stuff. Just wait till Monday. Ooh. But we won't be factoring, except maybe by GCF. <laughs>